house and we pray the Lord's blessings on our chapel service this morning to start our school day. So as usual, we will begin with a hymn that Miss Rose will tell us what it will be. For England and those today. Red and Six zero five. Six zero five. Then Papa Lopez. Yep. <laughs> The 
disciples went on from there and went through Galilee. And Jesus did not want anyone to know he was coming because he was teaching his disciples and saying, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will put him to death. And when he is killed after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. And when they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept quiet, because on the way they had argued with one another about which one was the greatest. And he sat down and he called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last and servant of all. And he took the child and he put him in the middle of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now continue on page 263. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the place where your glory dwells. On page 264, we recite the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. We confess the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So as you were listening to what happened in the reading today with Jesus and the apostles in Mark 9, you probably heard that they were acting the way a lot of us often act, but yet that's not a good thing. While they were heading back to where they were going, they got into a big argument because they were arguing which one of them was the best at being an apostle. Now, on one hand, it's good that you would want to try to do your best at whatever you're trying to do. And so they took 
the idea of being an apostle very seriously, and they all wanted to be good at it. But it's something different when you go so far <clears throat> as to want to think that you're better than some other people and to put other people down. But we, we do this all the time. And the point that Jesus was trying to make is that when you look at what we think, uh, when we think of what is the best, and then we compare it to what God thinks about what is being the best, those are two totally different things. Jesus says <coughs> that if anyone would be first, that he must be last of all and servant of all. So that means that when God thinks what God thinks the best person will be like, it will be a person who is always thinking of other people, always wanting to help other people, always loving other people. So the things that we look for in somebody being the best, maybe they're the smartest, maybe they're the fastest, maybe they're the best by whatever way we try to say the best is, but God says loving other people and helping other people is what makes a person the best. And that's important for us to hear because we go on and we go through and it, again, we're trying to do our best. You're in school. You should try your best to get as good of grades as possible. What becomes a problem is if you get to a place where you start thinking that you're smarter and better than all of your other classmates. That's not a godly way of thinking. Uh, a godly approach to school, for example, would be that if one of your classmates doesn't understand something that you're trying to learn in class and you understand it, God would want you to try to help them figure it out so that they would understand it too. So in other words, God's way is about picking everybody else up to try to help everybody be better instead of our way, which is trying to push everybody down so that we can be the best. And you know, you see that example best in Jesus on the cross. Jesus was God, okay? He could have come around and said, well, I'm the best, I'm the greatest, I'm this, I'm that. He would have been right because he's God. But that's not what Jesus ever did when he was here. Jesus was all about helping other people, loving other people, serving other people. And at the end of the day, when the time came, Jesus served you and me by allowing himself to die on the cross. Jesus was great enough to stop that whole cross scene on Good Friday, but he didn't stop it because he wanted your sins and my sins to be paid for so that we could go to heaven because of him dying on the cross. So that shows how much Jesus loves us. He was willing to die for us to help us by giving us heaven. And so that's the way he wants us to treat each other. To love each other, to think of other people first before, before thinking of us, and always try to help and love one another. So let's go ahead and pray. So bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. To pay for all of my sins. To pay for all of my sins. Help me always to remember. Help me always to remember that you put me here. That you put me here to love and serve other people. To love and serve other people. Help me to do my best. Help me to do my best. To always remember others. To always remember others. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, now Miss Rose will now continue with our next hymn that she has picked out, and that hymn will be. Our hymn of the month. Let us ever walk with Jesus. Within your red hymnal is 65. Let us ever walk with Jesus. Verse 1 or verse 24? Uh, I think it has 4. Uh, 1 and 4. Verses 1 and 4.
five for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of heart, with all of our hearts and with all of our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the holy Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for everyone who travels, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry, the homeless, the widow, and the orphan, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And finally, for these and for all of our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, whose strength is made perfect in weakness, grant us humility and childlike faith, that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart. And by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we would embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from, from sin and every evil, that all, all my doings and life may please, please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil soul may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And do we conclude with a hymn or? Nine twenty-two. Nine twenty-two. One, two, and four. One, two.